A question that comes up uh, sometimes in dog bite cases or dog attack cases is, what if that dog owner does not have insurance? What do you do with a claim like that here in Mississippi? And uh, the answer is, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to assess that situation from top to bottom. Uh, sometimes people say they don't have insurance, but they actually do. Uh, sometimes insurance uh, says they're not obligated to cover a claim, but they actually are. And so the first step in that situation is to make sure that, that you don't just take them at their word uh, that you're actually exploring every option for available insurance coverage uh, against a party uh, who owns the dog who caused the injury. And that's not just true in uh, dog bite, dog attack cases. You know, that applies to a lot of personal injury cases because uh, we all know insurance companies like to hang on to their money. And if they can find a way to deny coverage or reduce the value of the claim, they're going to do that and sometimes that includes just denying that coverage exists uh, or denying that coverage applies to a given situation uh, even though it may. Now in a situation where a, uh, uh, in, in this instance a dog owner uh, of a dog that caused injury to someone else and that there is legal, we're assuming there's legal liability for it, you know, that uh, we can meet all the requirements under the law where that owner uh, is liable for the injury. But in a situation like that where there's not insurance, uh, and, and this would apply also really to injury, any personal injury case where uh, the responsible party does not have insurance, then there's still uh, a couple of avenues to look at uh, in terms of the victim getting properly compensated and recovering. And uh, one avenue is uh, looking at your own insurance. Uh, are there uh, options and avenues where you potentially may have coverage available to you? Uh, through your own homeowner's policy, depending on where it happened, uh, but also through uh, other policies that may apply to that situation. Um, you know, was the person who was injured uh, on the job at the moment, for instance? Well, workers' comp may come into play if that person attacked by the dog, uh, for instance, was uh, say checking the water meters or if you were there on the property for business purposes uh, you know repairing a roof or doing some other type of work um, the uh, you know other option you know beyond your own insurance or other insurance coverage that may come into play outside of that defendant uh, is to just proceed with the claim and uh, obtain a judgment uh, through, through trial or verdict and uh, then collect against that judgment on the uh, responsible party. And that could involve uh, garnishing wages, it could involve attaching assets um, and uh, ongoing collection efforts against them uh, but once you have uh, a judgment in place, uh, there typically uh, is, in most states, a time period for collecting on that judgment. Uh, in Mississippi, that is typically seven years. But the good news is, once you enroll that judgment, <clears throat> if you haven't fully collected on it at the end of that seven years, uh, as long as you don't let it respire, you can oftentimes go back and renew that judgment to extend it for an additional seven years. And so you just continue that process uh, in order to collect on them. And that's where uh, you know, good investigative work uh, really comes in uh, to cases. Uh, and dog bite, dog attack cases 
are a great example of where that often is um, involved uh, because it's looking for the insurance coverage uh, and the ability to pay for the claim uh, that has to be done on the front end, but it's not just coverage that that defendant has or says they have or don't have. Uh, it's actually digging a layer deeper to that of what's available. Uh, look in the next level of, you know, are there other coverages out there that may apply to the situation? And if there's no insurance coverage, it's looking to just are there other assets um, that, uh, you know, that can be collected upon or collected against uh, in the event of a judgment. So all of that, uh, though, really requires legal assistance. There's just uh, virtually no way that a person can do that on their own without legal help and not just run-of-the-mill legal help. Uh, really got to have someone involved who does litigation regularly, um, someone who has some experience and a track record of success on uh, these dog bite or dog attack claims and uh, experience collecting judgments and uh, running down insurance. And uh, here at Brad Morris Law Firm, PLLC, uh, that's what we do. And uh, we have a record of success to show that. And uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to us through our website or give us a call and we'll try to get you pointed in the right direction on your, uh, whether it's a dog bite claim or some other type of personal injury. Uh, the main thing is we want to try to get you the help you need. So thanks for watching.